What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, chili, cheesy, amazing, scratch made chili dog. Coming up. This is some meat. Mmm. -hmm. Pat it dry. And what I got here is a beautiful chuck roast as well as some chunks of some pork butt. And in the past when I made hot dogs, they usually go all beef, but today I decided we'd do a beef and pork mixture and see how it comes out. But just like every other sausage making video, we got to start by cubing this stuff up. That way it chills down a lot quicker in the freezer as well as fits through the grinder a lot easier. And when it comes to beef versus pork ratios, it's kind of up to you. I'm going to shoot for a little bit beef heavier, but you know what? We're going to just see how it works out today. But going for a five pound batch. So if I need any extra beef, I also just trimmed the brisket not too long ago. So got some brisket scrap I might throw in there as well. Very nice. And as you can see, this chuck is pretty fatty and all this pork is very fatty as well. So I'm hoping that our fat ratio will just kind of work itself out. So I'm going for three pounds of beef to two pounds of pork fat. It's always nice when you can find the stuff that's already chunked up for you. Save you a little knife work. And just like that, five pounds of beef and pork ready to go into the freezer for the next 30 minutes or so to get nice and cool cold. While we wait for our meat to chill down, let's go ahead and get our spice blend together. Starting with one bag of nice and plump Chud's barbecue sauce with starter mix. Going in, followed by some pink curing salt, number one. Because remember, there's no curing salt in the sausage mix. And then some classic hot dog flavors like some mace, some coriander, some celery seed, and some marjoram. And that's it. All the salt and milk powder and everything else that I like to put in sausage is already in the mix. But if you don't have this mix, you can also check out some of my previous hot dog videos where I have other recipes written out that work just as well. And we're good to go. <sighs> Going through the small die today. And just like that, our meat is nice and chilled, coming out of the freezer. Not completely frozen, because then it would clog up the grinder, but really nice and cold. So we're gonna send it through the small die right now. I'm also gonna periodically chip through some of these ice cubes. This is 10% weight of the amount of meat, so 226 grams of ice that so we're gonna send through along with this meat to make sure everything stays nice and cold, which is especially important when making hot dogs or any emulsified sausage. There we go, nicely ground up. Although it's like 108 degrees out here right now. So we're gonna go ahead and temp this. And we're right about 33 degrees, 37 in some parts. So I'm gonna pop this back in the freezer before we do our second grind for just a little bit. And now that it's nice and chilled, we're gonna go ahead and add in all of our seasoning. Oh yeah. And just get that as evenly incorporated as possible. But like I said, we're sending this through the grinder again. So that'll also help distribute all these spices. And now through we go again. As you can see on the second grind, it's already starting to look a little bit more like a hot dog. Beautiful. Very nice. Back into the freezer we go. All right, guys, and after letting this chill in the freezer for another little bit, I'm just trying to keep this mix between 30 and 35 degrees just to make sure that this emulsion doesn't break and we get a bunch of fat smearing. So I'm gonna attempt to send this through one more time. Although the tackier this is getting, the harder it is to send through. So definitely a good time to bust out the old meat plunger here. But one more time. Beautiful, and just like that, you can tell this is a super fine grind at this point. It's already starting to get that hot dog color, but I'm gonna get this grinder cleaned up. Now at this point, we've got a very fine grind on there, and we could easily just case this up right now and get some pretty good hot dogs, but if you look closely, you can still see some white specks in there. So in order to get this to full hot dog consistency, I'm gonna pop it in the stand mixer here with the old paddle attachment. If it was any bigger of a batch, I'd probably bust out the meat mixer, but I think this should do just fine. Ooh. We're gonna do two batches on this. And just let that mix up for a while. And after just a few minutes, this stuff is starting to look rather unappetizing, but it's the proper consistency, kind of like a meat mousse situation. There you go, folks. That's what hot dogs are made of. And as you can see over here is the one we just mixed and over here is the one that I haven't mixed yet. And you can really tell the difference between the consistency, much smoother. So now we'll do the rest. Beautiful. Beep. 
So the plan here was to go on with some of these natural sheep casings, but I've been sitting here for a good five minutes just trying to get these on and they do not want to work. I think they're a little old. I made some snack sticks with them a little while ago and you can tell just they don't want to stay together. And if, you know, I can't even get them onto the horn, the odds of successfully making a sausage with these are no good. So we might have to go synthetic casing again this year. Yeah, these are not going to work. So I went searching through the cupboard seeing if I had any other dry packs of sheep casings, to which I did not and it's like seven o'clock at night so there's no chance i'm getting any tonight and i don't want to leave this in here or in bulk form because that cure will start to do its work and it'll probably be really hard to case tomorrow but what i did come across in my pantry was some collagen casings i don't think i've ever used these before but hey might as well give it a shot today right i know these are typically used for uh, snack sticks and breakfast sausages so i think it should work for a hot dog this is weird <laughs> snip the tip hi it off this is not looking good. Pretty thin. What are these, 22 mil? Yeah, I think that should be all right. And there we go, we got two little weens. Not too confident in these, but hmm, I guess we'll see what happens. Going for some pretty long dogs today. Not quite foot longs like we did last year, but you know, enough that they'll hang out of the bun a little bit. These are pretty nice though, because they definitely don't want to pop. So you can make them nice and plump. Not too shabby. All right, good news folks. When I was in there poking around just now, after making several of these guys, I found some really small hog casings. These are, I think, 28 mil. So I'm gonna try one of these out and see if they're too fat for a hot dog. But you know what? I don't want to make them all out of collagen casings just to realize that it's a total fail. So might as well give these a shot. <laughs> oh yeah, those are nice and plump. It's be like last summer's video. Some real thick hot dogs. I'll tell you what, for being a size smaller than the casings I usually use, those look exactly the same. Great. And while we're experimenting with different casings, might as well bust out the tried and true cellulose casings. These are how you make traditional skinless hot dogs. I've done this a couple times in the past. Nice and plump. And just like that, folks, all of our weans are cased up. So now into the fridge they go overnight to let that cure do its thing. This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. In addition to their membership boxes, they also allow you to purchase individual items from their online store. Items ranging from outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, and many more. Their online shop is a treasure trove of gear from small brands you may not have heard of. And they're committed to quality and craftsmanship. And many are small based businesses businesses based right here in the U.S. The store is updated each week with new stuff. The item I got is the Cocktail Smoking and Infusion Kit. Made by a company called Marcellin, what you get is this cool little glass cloche, a nifty difty little butane lighter, and a beautiful wood base plate. Grab some wood chips, throw in your cocktail glass, fill it up with whatever you like, grab your little torch here, get this lit, throw it on top, and begin to smoke whatever it is you like. Ooh. Nice and smoky. I gotta say, this thing is pretty cool. It's really fun to whip out at parties, make some smoked cocktails for people. A smoked old fashioned, very great. But also, you can smoke whatever you want in this thing. You throw something on there that's a little more delicate, like a piece of salmon or maybe a dessert or something. This kit comes in very handy. If you don't have one of these, by the way, I highly recommend it. Get a little brulee action going on, very convenient. And also this thing is a great way to elevate your plating. I'll tell you what, if you make your wife breakfast in bed and deliver it with this and go, here you are, you're gonna look very fancy. As you know, smoking things is a big part of my life. And having a piece of kit like this around for smoking cocktails or anything else I like is just another tool in the tool belt. So if you want to get your own smoke infusion kit made by Marcel and supporting this channel and supporting a small business, click the link in the description box of this video taking you to bespokepost.com slash chudsbbq. Again, link in the description, that's bespokepost.com slash chudsbbq. Thank you, Bespoke Post. One overnight later, these dogs are looking great. You can tell they've changed color a little bit. That cure has done its work. They dried out a little bit in the refrigerator. And now it's time to fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. We're gonna leave these tied together, that way the ends don't blow out because unlike hog casings, these plastic ones have not really dried out too much overnight. So, just gonna leave them like this. These are the collagen casings. And basically we're doing a good old fashioned cold smoke today. Just got one big dense log in there, small bed of charcoal. I'm gonna just try and get this thing as smoky as possible without getting the temperatures above 100, 150 degrees. So, get this thing nice and smoky and we'll check back in in a few hours. Next up, let's make some buns. Starting by going into our stand mixer with some warm milk, active dry yeast, some sugar, as well as two eggs plus one egg yolk. In. Give that a little mix. 
And then we're going in with our bread flour, some dough conditioner, that just helps make this bread extra soft, as well as some milk powder. I like adding this, it kind of acts like a Tang Zong would. Not really, but it also helps make the bread a little bit softer and a little bit sweeter. And of course, you gotta top it off with some salt and let that come together for a couple minutes. And once a shaggy dough like this has formed, we're gonna go in with our softened butter. Beautiful. Now let this mix for about six to eight minutes. Ooh, beautiful, smooth, supple dough. Ooh, she's sticky. Beautiful stuff, I tell you what. And now into a grease bowl, this goes. And let this rise for about an hour, hour and a half. One hour later, you can see this dough has doubled in size, looking nice and plump. So, out it comes. Ooh, pat out all that air. And now we're gonna divide it up into some dough balls, weighing in at about 65 grams a pop. 61, not a bad first try. Perfect. And then we're gonna take our little dough pieces, fold all the corners to the bottom for a nice smooth top, and give it the old table roll, and onto a sheet tray we go. And we're gonna let these rest for about 10 minutes. Now that these have relaxed a little bit, they've gotten a little bit more used to their new form, what we're gonna do is flip these over, kinda of tuck them in towards themselves a little bit, and just really start rolling these out into some hot dog shapes. Well, hot dog bun shapes, anyway. I'm gonna flour this real quick. Just looking for a nice little rectangle, about five, six inches long, something like that. And back on the tray we go. Punch all the air out, fold it towards itself, pinch those seams shut, seam side down, just kind of roll it out. To be honest, I'm not very good at these, so these are probably gonna come out looking a little wonky, but still gonna taste great. And just like that, we got two sheet trays full of these little logs. So we're gonna set these aside and let these proof for another 45 minutes before we bake them off. All right, it's been about three, four hours on these peens. So let's see how they are looking. Ooh, gotta say that smoke definitely did its work. Nice and crispy skins, very nice and red. Feeling nice and plump. Let's get a temp on these. Right around 135. So I'm gonna bump these temps up a little bit, get these cooked all the way through to around 150, and then we'll pull them off. And after just a little bit, these things are temping right and coming off the pit. Ooh, nice and red. Kind of toasty. Drop these into an ice bath to stop the cooking process. Cool them down rapidly, as we typically do. Gotta say, these guys are looking real nice. And I'm not sure if I should do it with the collagen casings, because, you know, collagen and water and whatnot. But maybe I'll try it with these two and see how it goes. And after a nice proofing, these hot dog buns are looking good. Nice and plump. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit these with an egg wash. This is just a couple of eggs with a splash of water. I'm worried these might be a little too plump, but hey, we got plenty of dogs. And it's also at this point, you could go on with some extra topping, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, bagel spice, you name it. But I think we're gonna just keep these pretty simple today. Seeing how we've got a lot of toppings going on to these dogs. Bew. T full. Now into a 350 degree oven these go for the next 25 to 30 minutes. While our buns bake, we're gonna make ourselves a very quick, super simple Texas style chili for our chili dogs. Starting with some homemade nice thick beef. That was quick, homemade beef stock. Just a little bit. And we're gonna go into some chilies. This is some ancho, already de-stemmed and de-seeded. We got some guajillo, maybe that's California, can't remember. And we got some arbol in there for some heat. And once that comes up to a nice simmer, we're just gonna pop the lid on and let these steam for a little bit to make sure they're nice and soft. And once those have softened up nicely, go ahead and grab yourself some tweezers and grab these bad Larrys and put them right into the blender. Then with a little more stock, just to make sure this blends up nicely. Pop the lid on and get our chili paste ready. Beautiful. And now take our chili paste, which is infused with beef stock, and add that right back to our pot. Oh, love it. I'm gonna rinse this out so we don't lose any flavor. Love it! Now, as I mentioned, we're making a real quick and easy chili today. This is just a brisket I cooked a little while ago. Been chilling in the fridge. I didn't vac seal it in time, and it's a perfect thing to throw into some chili because it's nice and smoky and already cooked all the way through. So all I need to do now is cut this up. 
to go into our chili. And typically if I'm doing a brisket chili, what I'll do is I'll just cut this up into some one inch chunks, throw it in there, kind of let it braise down and break down over time until it becomes nice and shreddy. And remember, we're making chili dogs, so we don't want a super chunky chili. So at that point, I would usually hit it with the immersion blender to get a nice cohesive meat sauce, which is really what we're trying to make. But because I'm trying to make this as quickly as possible right now, I'm gonna take a little bit of a shortcut. That's a good old fashioned meat grinder. That's right, folks. This ought to make real quick work of getting this into chili form. Looks like chili already. Beautiful. And now that our chili paste is up to a simmer, in we go with our brisket. Ooh, yes, please. And just get that nice and mixed in. Ooh. This is gonna be meaty, looking good already. But before we go ahead and bring this back up to a simmer, we're gonna go in with a little bit of some onion powder. Why not? Some garlic powder, of course. A nice healthy shot of some cumin, some mustard powder, a little paprika, and I've got another quart of homemade smoky beef stock in case this gets a little too thick. But at this point, I'm gonna just let this simmer for the next few minutes or basically until we're ready to use it. And there we go, the world's fastest chili. Be sure to taste and adjust for seasoning. Definitely gonna throw a pinch of salt in this as soon as it comes up to a simmer. But I just saw the oven go off, so that means our buns are ready. And just like that, out of the oven these come. I hit them with some melted butter brushed on top as these came out, so they're looking extra shiny and extra delicious. And yeah, just that, ooh, come on. A little snack for Papa. Not the, you know, most uniform looking buns, but I tell you what, they're feeling fluffy and I know they're gonna be absolutely delicious. Just look at this. Oh, so squishy. Love it. All right, folks, out of the water bath we come. That water bath had no negative effect on these collagen casings, which is great. And these guys are looking good. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and give these all a nice little wipe down because as we all know, everybody loves a clean wean. And then it's time to snip these all apart. So on my left here, I've got all the collagen casings plus the hog casing gigantors over here. Feeling nice and plump, must say. Love the color on these. All of them, really. And then these are all the ones that were in the cellulose casing, which we need to now take off because it's not edible and it could not be simpler. There we go, beautiful little hot dog. Find the tip, give it a snip, and slide it right on out. This is the true casingless hot dog. This is how they make every hot dog you're gonna see at a gas station. No casings, got the little butthole end on there. Ah, so cute. All right, folks, we got the mini chud box fired up in grill formation. And I think it's time to fire off a couple of these dogs, shall we? Starting with some of our skinless, regular hot dogs, as seen in years past. And we've got a couple of our thin boys here. These are the collagen casings. We'll throw these in the back. And I think that's where we're gonna start because I have a feeling the thick boy is gonna flare up on us a lot. So maybe we'll do that second. Right off the bat, it looks like our collagen casings are curling up on us a little bit, as to be expected with anything that's in a casing. That casing is gonna shrink up first. As for these skinless guys, they're cooking up like pretty much every hot dog I've ever seen in my life. Getting some cute little grill marks. Pretty happy with how both of these are cooking, you know? The emulsion stayed strong, nothing's crumbling or falling apart. As these guys get charred, you can see that collagen casing is starting to split a little bit and shrink back. I don't know, it's all about the snap on these. I think these are good. I'm gonna pull these off. They darkened up pretty quick. I think they're in the hot part of the grill. Let these guys go for another few seconds. Looking good, nice and plump. Off these guys come and then we'll throw on one of these big bad Larry's just for fun it's just nice and plump and it just bumps me out because this is how all of our sheep casing hot dogs would have turned out which is what I was aiming for for this video but oh well next time next time Ooh, a little crispy to start out with our classic regular skinless wean Mm. Beautiful bind on that. Looks like a grilled hot dog. Mm -hmm. mm. Fantastic flavor. Really tastes like a hot dog. Collagen casing. Never cooked with these before. Pretty interesting. Okay. Okay. 
Hmm, very hot. Yeah, I can say the collagen casing works well, you know? Still got that classic hot dog look. It's kind of interesting, kind of weird. It's not snappy like a hog casing or a sheep casing would be, but you know, in a pinch, I think it would work well. I don't think it's my favorite. It kind of flakes off a little bit, especially if you're gonna sear it hot and fast like I did. It kind of breaks and becomes really brittle, but from a casing perspective, the collagen casings are pretty much unbreakable. So it makes casing very, very easy and very fun. Between the two of these, I'd probably stick with the skinless guys. Oh. But I think it's time to assemble a chili dog. <laughs> Top split bun, folks. Perfect for a dog. Oh, look at that crumb. So soft, so squishy. Gotta love it. Take our nice ween, stuff it right in there. Oh, what a fit. Get some of our beautiful brisket chili and just load it right in there. That's the consistency you're looking for, folks. Smooth, pourable, yet beefy. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with that. Top it with some freshly grated cheddar cheese. Don't be shy, folks, come on. Maybe give that a little help melting. And finish it off with some freshly diced white onion. Gotta say, I am very excited about this bite. I'm ready. I mean, what's not to like here, folks? Homemade smoked beef and pork hot dog on a homemade butter toasted bun topped with cheddar cheese and onions. Oh yeah, don't forget all that brisket chili. Can't even see it. Ah, I'm ready. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> the texture of that fluffy, freshly baked bread and that perfectly homemade smoky hot dog. Mm. That chili, it's just so rich and smoky. And honestly, it's not that messy. You know, nothing's running down my hands. We just got a beautiful bite going on here. Oh, ah, ah. Oh yeah, that chili, the homemade bun. That is how you need to spend your 4th of July, folks. I tell you what. Mm. Flavor profile on the dog, perfect. It tastes honestly just like every hot dog I've ever had. Any high quality hot dog, that is. But the addition of that actual post oak smoke on there really does make a difference as opposed to the liquid smoke I'm sure they're using for all the store-bought hot dogs. And then of course you got everything else homemade too. It's just, it's just elevated junk food. Mm. I'm just gonna keep going. I haven't had chili in a while. Mm. I mean, Come on. I like the That's... collagen casing, kind of snappy. That just looks like a gigantic smoky hot dog. That is a dog if I've ever had one. Mm. Ready for a chili dog? Ready, let's go. That's a mouthful. Mm. Normally when you're eating a chili dog, it's not from a reputable place. This, every aspect of it tastes homemade, tastes craft, tastes delicious. So it's like... That was my one note I was going to yeah. say. If I was going to say anything, it's like, it tastes a little too gourmet. The thing is, like, watching you eat that, I can't tell that there's chili on that. Where every other chili dog I've had, it's running everywhere, it's going into my shoes. <laughs> my beard is a mess. People are going to give me a lot of poop about that in the comments. The smooth chili, but I don't want chunks. Let them talk. We have the satisfaction of being right. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing is like, you could make a chunky chili. I love a chunky brisket chili, but not on a hot dog. Yeah. Is there any more American 4th of July dish than a chili dog? I don't think so. I think maybe just a traditional hot dog, you know, with as like long as it's in the ketchup. dog family. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, God bless America. All right, folks, with this last onion free bite of chili cheese dog, I think it's time for the official taste test. I don't know how folks, but I somehow lost the footage of the very end of this video So if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue I love to see what y'all are cooking Big shout out to all the Patreon members Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside Peace!